no more missing ropes drivers have improved a lot when compared to three or four months ago RTX 5090 prices are coming down and entry-level models are starting to be available in shops at around MSRP prices. In today's video I'm gonna have a look at an entry-level RTX 5090, in this case the Gigabyte RTX 5090 WinForce OC model. I'm gonna cover thermals, performance, overclocking capabilities under vaulting and finish with noise. I actually tested the GPU at 32 degrees Celsius room temperatures just to see how hot it can get. The WinForce GPUs are the low end models in Gigabyte's lineup, but it still comes with a vapor chamber and a hefty size. This is how it looks next to my Zotac 5080 Solid, which is not tiny either. While both cards are equally thick, the WinForce model is longer and taller. This means that in some PC cases it may be a tight fit. One thing to consider when buying a new GPU with the new power connector is the PC case CPU air cooler clearance, as this way you will have an idea if the power cable connected to the GPU may have issues due to the tight space between it and the side panel when mounting the GPU horizontally. This GPU is 150mm wide, so I would recommend a PC case that has at least 175mm CPU air cooler clearance. This is how it looks with a PC case that can fit an air cooler up to 184mm tall. This will not be an issue if the PSU's GPU power cable has a 90 degree angled connector. This Gigabyte model comes with dual BIOS, which is a bit unexpected as this is considered a low end model. By default, the Performance One is enabled. With that said, this is not the only entry-level model that comes with dual BIOS. It has a dark color theme without any RGB. To be honest, I dig this look. The build is ok, nothing special, but it doesn't feel cheap either. The plastic shroud seems to be of ok quality. It seems to be on the same level as my Zotac RTX 5080 Solid, or maybe a bit below it, but then again, that is a low-end model as well. Looks are subjective, so what I like may not be to your liking. The only thing that makes this GPU look really cheap is the fact that the bracket is for 2 slots, while the GPU is around 3.5 slots. I didn't use the provided GPU support when installing, as I have one, but I made sure that it's straight. I know that there were GPUs from Gigabyte that had thermal putty leaking issues, but in theory, those are resolved. So make sure that you are buying a GPU that has a serial number that starts with at least 2520 as sometime in May 2025 Gigabyte stated that they fixed the issue. Don't forget that thermal putty is in theory superior to traditional thermal pads. Now let's look at thermals. For this I used Alan Wake 2 with path tracing at 4K. I let the game run leave the room as I turned off the AC to reach summer heat wave temperatures of a bit above 32 degrees and return after 30 minutes. After I recorded the thermals using Hardware Info 64 and checked the GPU temps using a thermal imaging camera while the game was still running. When it comes to thermals during gaming consuming 575 watts, I recorded a maximum of 84 degrees for the memory and 75.5 for the GPU. The GPU fan speed topped at 2250 RPM. I think these temperatures are ok for 32 degrees room temperature but nothing special. Don't forget that my PC case has good ventilation with three 140 front intake fans and two 120mm bottom intake fans. When I checked the temperatures of the connector with the thermal imaging camera, I was pleasantly surprised. I was expecting it to be around 70 degrees, but it was around 60, so even better. The back of the GPU core reaches close to 75 degrees, but that is normal. The back plate doesn't seem to get that warm, while the radiator grill over the third GPU fan, the one close to the front intake fans, doesn't seem to get that warm, sitting at above 50 degrees. So from a temperature point of view, nothing alarming. In fact, these are decent thermals, considering again a 32 degrees room temperature. For comparison, these are the readings for the Zotac RTX 5080 at 30 degrees room temperature. 
Keep in mind that the 5080 consumes 235 watts less. As you can be seen, the difference in temperature is small. I tested the RTX 1590 WinForce OC model with an ambient room temperature of around 27 degrees Celsius as well, and the max memory temperature has dropped to 82 degrees Celsius, while the GPU maxed out at 73. This is with the normal fan curve. When I set the GPU fan speed at 80%, then the thermals drop to 80 degrees for the memory and 70.8 for the GPU. When maximizing out the fan speed, the GPU top at 67.6 and the memory at 76 degrees. I would say it has adequate cooling in line with other models, but not close to MSI's Supreme model. Then again, that one is more expensive. I don't have another 5090 to compare it with, so I'll drop some side-by-side -side runs with the 58. When it comes to graphics, I use max settings DLA-A when available, no upscaling at both 1440p and 4K. And even so, there were situations where the 5090 was not 100% utilized, at least at 1440p. I'm gonna show only a few meaningful side-by-side -side runs with the settings used. Keep in mind that only the resolution is changing. Let's start with Counter-Strike 2. If you are looking to use the 5090 for competitive games with low settings, I would say it's better to save some money and go with a cheaper GPU as in the tested area, I average 842.2 with the 5090 while the 5080 managed 807. In all other games at 1440p, the 5090 had a significant advantage. The low performance difference in Counter-Strike 2 is because the GPU utilization for the 5090 is not at 100%. At 1440p no ray tracing, the 5090 averaged 210.6 in the games tested, while the 5080 170.8 FPS. When we move to ray tracing or path tracing games at 1440p, things change. In Indiana Jones, with almost everything maxed out and path tracing enabled, the 5080 runs out of VRAM, thus we have a big performance gap. In the other games where I use path tracing, that are Alan Wake 2, Cyberpunk 2077, Doom, Dark Ages and Black Myth Wukong, the 5090 is a 60fps GPU, give or take. Even in normal tracing games like Ratchet and Clank, the performance gap between the 5090 and the 5080 is huge. Overall, based on the games tested, when enabling ray tracing and path tracing, the 5090 averaged 90.24 frames while the 5080 managed 50.3. Moving on to 4K raster. Big performance gaps can be seen. In Ratchet and Clank, the 5080 averages a bit more than the 5090's 1% low values. In the altars, we see the same pattern, but this time around the 1% low values of the 5090 are above the 5080's averages. There is a big performance gap in Monster Hunter Wilds, with the 5090 averaging 108.4 frames per second, while the 5080 managed 60. I think this game needs a bit more VRAM than the 5080 has, as I saw on the 5090 that there were instances where it topped 15GB used. With that said, the 5090 shies at 4K native, while the 5080 struggles in some games. The 5080 can be a 4K GPU, provided you use upscaling and tweak some graphic settings. Regardless, the 5090 averaged 99.9 .9 frames per second, while the 5080 only 65.6. Now, when turning on ray tracing or path tracing without upscaling, we see the 5080 crumble in some games. First, in Indiana Jones, I couldn't even run the game. I suspect that if the GPU had 24GB of VRAM, the 5080 would have been around 30 FPS on average. The other game where it had issues was Doom Dark Ages. Again, due to low VRAM, the 5080 delivers a slideshow while the 5090 can reach close to 40 FPS on average. The 5080 may have issues in Monster Hunter Wilds because, like stated previously, 16GB is at the edge and in some situations the GPU needs to offload and load textures as opposed to the 5090 which has plenty of VRAM. I suspect that the upcoming 5080 Super with its 24GB VRAM would close the gap a bit. 
Looking at the averages across all games tested with ray tracing and path tracing enabled, the 5090 managed to deliver 57.2 frames, while the 5080 managed only 37.8 frames per second. The average display for the 5080 is with the games that it couldn't run removed. If I would add Indiana Jones and Doom the Dark Ages, the averages for the 5080 will drop, widening the gap. But what can you expect when overclocking the WinForce OC version? Well, you can increase the power limit by 4%, this will enable it to reach 600 watts. I went with just increasing the core clock by 330 MHz and the memory clock by 2000 while keeping the same power limit. In Doom The Dark Ages, at 4K with path tracing, max settings and no upscaling, when the GPU is overclocked, it managed to get 40.5 FPS, while using stock settings, the GPU averaged 39, resulting in almost 4% better performance. Not a big gain. In Silent Hill 2, at 4K, with ray tracing enabled, overclocking the 5090, we can see averages of 76.1, while stock settings averaged 71.8 frames per second. This is an increase of 4.3 frames on average, amounting to a bit more than 5% more FPS. I think that I could squeeze more performance out of this GPU, but this will take time in finding out if it's stable or not. I did check the thermos and when overclocking, I saw the memory top at 86 degrees, while the GPU was the same as stock settings. But what about undervolting? First, undervolting can help with lower power consumption, thus lowering thermals. This takes a lot of time in fine-tuning the curve. I'm still continuously tweaking the undervolt values, but now I have this, it seems to perform the same as the stock profile, at least in heavy games. Using my settings, I managed to drop the max power usage in Alan Wake 2 by 50 watts and not lose performance, so I think this is a win and a must for gamers out there using the 5090. Let's move to noise. When it comes to noise, it's a mixed bag, but more on the pleasant side. This GPU has no coil wine, but neither the 5080 or the 9070 XT that I have, all good from this point of view. To be honest, I was expecting some as 575 watts in games or thousands of frames per second in in-game menus may produce some, but nothing on this unit. Now let's move to fan noise. This GPU is not loud by any means, the GPU fan noise blend with the system fans. The Red Devil 9070XT produces a bit more noise at 2200 plus RPM while the Zotac 5080 Solid is on par at the same 2200 RPM but it is a different sound profile. What I'm not a big fan of is the sound profile of the Gigabyte WinForce OC version. It is a high pitched sound which can be covered by system fans only up to 70% GPU fan speed. With that said, when gaming, I use in-ear monitors and my system fans are on aggressive fan curve. I use the phone app to measure the noise output and turned off all the system and I.O. fans. On the screen you have the readings that I got at 50%, a speed that is easy to reach. 67% again is easy to reach in summertime. At 80%, the fans start to be noticeable, while at 100%, you can definitely hear the GPU fans. I would say that it produces less noise than the Asus TUF 5080 that I tested a while back, but a bit more than the Zotac 5080 Solid. Now, which should you choose, the 5080 or go with the 5090? The 5090 is the most powerful GPU of this generation, and AMD or Intel don't have anything to match it. Thus, Nvidia can charge how much they want. The prices are coming down as I managed to snag this one brand new for under 2200 euros, including taxes. This comes at two times more than the cheapest 5080 that I can get right now here in Spain. The performance difference, even at 4K, is not double of the 5080. In this chart, I have the actual percentage values per game that the 5090 delivers over the 5080. This one is for raster, and this one is for 4K gaming with path tracing or ray tracing turned on. I remove the games where the 5080 ran out of VRAM. And this is the power difference in some games where both GPUs are pushed to the max. Looking at the max power, the 5090 consumes almost 70% more power than the 5080 while the performance difference comes close 
but not there. If you are into summer temperatures or year-round, the 1590 will help with that. I would say this, if you want the best, I would go for the 1590 as it has enough VRAM that you don't have to worry when gaming and productivity. If you cannot afford it, I will skip the 5080 and go with the 5070 Ti, as that one has a better price to performance ratio value when pitted against the 5080. There is the 9070 XT from AMD that is a much better value than the 5080. All previously mentioned GPUs come with 16GB of VRAM. But what about the Gigabyte Winforce 5090 OC model? It comes with dual BIOS, average cooling, nothing alarming, but neither is groundbreaking. My unit doesn't have any coil whine. I would say that it doesn't produce much noise, but there are more silent variants. Being an entry-level model, I would say that it's a great option, provided you are not into RGB or have a white build, and you can get one for MSRP price. Gigabyte offers 4 years of warranty if you register, but Zotac tops that with 5. I like the look of Zotac Solid model more, but this one doesn't look bad. Just make sure that you have a big case, as going with the Windforce model, horizontal mounted, can be troublesome in some smaller cases due to the width and the power connector touching the side panel. And that's it for this video. If you found the video helpful, hit the thumbs up button, consider subscribing to the channel and drop a comment below and let me know which GPU manufacturer do you have and which one would you avoid. Take care and hope to see you all in the next one.